The navigation system allows you to create characters that can intelligently move around the game world. These characters use navigation meshes that are created automatically from your scene geometry. In the scene view they are shown in blue, but are invisible in the game. The mesh is made up of polygons. Characters use A-star pathfinding, which traces the path between the origin location and target location, finding the path with least polygons to travel across, whilst accurately avoiding obstacles. With NavMesh Pathfinding, you get an efficient, accurate and scalable solution for intelligent AI navigation, drastically simplifying development and enhancing performance out of the box. In this video, I am going to show you how to set up a NavMesh surface and use the AI Navigation version 2 package in Unity 6. Go to Window Package Manager. In Unity Registry, find AI Navigation from the list and install it. This is version 2. Also install the samples which contain scenes that explain how this works along with some great scripts that we can use. If you want to follow along with this video, install the assets from the video description below. This example scene was created in just a few minutes using Pro Builder, which is great for rapid prototyping and white boxing levels. It can be opened from the Blockouts asset pack from the basic layout scene and add Ellen from the 3D game characters asset pack. In order for a character to interact with the AI navigation system, we need to add a nav mesh agent to the character. From here, we can use the agent dropdown to open a navigation window. This allows us to define the agent settings, add new agents and control area costs. In version 2 you will see there is no option to bake from the navigation window. To bake a navigation surface, go to Game Object, AI and NavMesh Surface. The bake is now part of a component. This means each NavMesh surface can be customised to different agents and you can create multiple NavMesh surfaces in a scene. Objects no longer need to be marked as navigation static. Instead, all objects are detected by default. Click Bake to create the nav mesh surface. If you don't see the blue surface, click on the AI navigation overlay button and check Show nav mesh surface. Ensure gizmos are also switched on. For older versions of Unity, you can switch on the AI navigation overlay by pressing apostrophe on the keyboard. The blue nav mesh surface cuts out the walls, preventing characters from walking through them. In the agent settings of the navigation window, the character is able to walk up steps due to the step height. If this is reduced and we rebake, the steps are no longer accessible by this character. We can also reduce the max slope, which defines the angles of sloped surfaces that the character is able to climb. The max angle is 60 degrees. If it is set to zero, the character would not be able to climb any surfaces with an angle greater than zero degrees. The radius defines the gap between objects. Reducing this will also reduce the gap. A larger radius may prevent the character from going over smaller surfaces such as these steps or through smaller doorways. The nav mesh surface data is stored in the scenes folder. Create an animation controller. Double click to open the animator window. I will use an idle and running animation for the Ellen character and I am adding a ball parameter called running. Transitions are made from idle to run and from run to idle. Add the animator controller to the Ellen character and uncheck apply root motion as the motion will be controlled by the nav mesh agent. We can use a move script from the samples AI navigation folder. Drag the click to move script onto the Ellen character. We need to modify the script slightly to include the animations. Add an animator variable. Get the animator component in the start method. In the update, we can use the agent velocity to detect if it is moving. If velocity is not equal to zero, we set the animator ball of running to true. This will play the run animation. Else, when the agent velocity is zero, we set the running ball to false. The character will play the idle animation. The onAnimatorMove function is called when the animation begins moving the character. We can use this when the ball of running is true and set the agent speed to match the animation movement speed which is obtained using the magnitude of the animator delta position divided by time dot delta time. This will now adjust the movement speed of the character to match the animation speed. Now when playing the scene as I click, the character runs to the position where I click. The angular speed on the character's nav mesh agent defines the speed of the rotation. This can be increased and now the rotation is much faster. 
Increasing the acceleration will speed up the time it takes the character to reach maximum speed. Auto braking will add an ease out to the movement, so the character will slow slightly before stopping. When unchecked, the character will maintain max speed right up until the character stops. Stopping distance can be used to change how far away the character stops from the target point. We see when the character runs up the steps, she treats it like a ramp, ignoring the step height altogether. You can bake a height mesh to have the character react to the height of different objects. Ensure that show height mesh is checked on. In the nav mesh surface inspector, under advanced, check the build height mesh checkbox. Now rebake and you can see the pink height mesh surface. This works alongside the nav mesh surface to tell the agent how to react to different heights of objects. Now you can see the character moving up and down with the height of each step. If we have multiple characters of different sizes, we will need to create multiple agent types where the values match each character size. Characters that have the same size can all share the same agent type. The Grenadier character is much larger than Ellen, so we need to create a new agent type in the navigation window. I'll increase the radius, height, step height and max slope. These values are used when baking a nav mesh surface. Add a nav mesh agent to the Grenadier character. We can see the default settings are too small. Choose the new agent we just created and type in the same values for radius and height. Now we can see this agent is better suited to this character. These values are used to move the character along the nav mesh surface. Create an animator controller and add a walk and attack animation. Use an attack ball to move between the two. When creating multiple nav mesh surfaces, check the show only selected to isolate just that nav mesh surface. Create a new nav mesh surface object. Select Grenadier as the agent type and click Bake. The character is too big to walk through the doorway or climb the steps. Create a new script called AI Target. Ensure the script is using the AI namespace. The nav mesh agent, animator and other variables are declared at the top. Get the components in the start method. In the update method we use a vector3 distance to return the distance between the Grenadier and Ellen. If distance is less than the attack distance, we stop the agent from moving by setting is stopped to true. Then set the animator attack ball to true. Else, if the distance is greater than the attack distance, we set the is stopped to false, allowing the agent to begin moving again. Set the destination for the agent to Ellen's position, which is the target position. Then set the animator attack ball to false, returning to a walk animation. Then add the on animator move function. Check if attack is false and match the agent speed to the animation speed. Add the script to the Grenadier and change attack distance to 2.5. Set Ellen as the target. During play mode, the Grenadier chases Ellen. However, he can't walk through doors or climb steps, so he has to find a different route to get to the player. If you want to view the debugging options, check on the Show Path Polygons, Show Path Query Nodes and Show Avoidance. With the character selected in the hierarchy during play mode, you will now see the debug draw lines showing the A-star pathfinding in operation for that character. In the step height scene, I want a nav mesh surface that cuts out various objects, which I have added from the 3D game kit environment pack, ensuring characters can't walk through them. However, baking the scene using the default settings results in this. For more control over what should be included in the nav mesh surface and what should be cut out, we can use the nav mesh modifier component. Selecting all objects we want to cut out, add a nav mesh modifier component. We can target a specific agent type or select all. Enable override area and choose not walkable from the drop down list. Now rebake and we can see those objects are cut out of the nav mesh surface. Select the grass and add a nav mesh modifier component. Choose Remove Object as the mode. Now rebake and we can see the grass is ignored, allowing the character to walk through it. In the multi level scene, I only want the top level to be walkable. We can achieve this by giving the top level assets a nav mesh modifier component. We can go with the default values. This is used to tell the nav mesh surface only to use these objects when baking. In the nav mesh surface in the object collection section, choose nav mesh modifier component only from the collect objects drop down, then bake. Now only the objects with nav mesh modifier components are used for the nav mesh surface. 
As you progress from blocking out a scene you will start to add finished assets, which I've done here from the 3D Game Kit Environment Pack. Notice that these items have a more organic shape. We want to cut out parts of the cliff and include these new platforms. Cliffs to be excluded should be given a nav mesh modifier component. Check the override area and choose not walkable. The parts to be included should be given a nav mesh modifier component with default values. Now when we bake, the cliffs are cut out from the nav mesh surface. The two cliff tops are included and the nav mesh surface allows characters to walk along them. If I add a character to this top block, I only want him to stay in this specific area. Creating a new nav mesh surface object, choose volume from the collect objects drop down. Now I can define the volume area. When I click bake, the nav mesh surface is created within that volume area. In the next video we will look at nav mesh links to get AI characters jumping, how to bake a nav mesh surface onto vertical surfaces such as walls, linking multiple nav mesh surfaces together, dynamically updating the nav mesh surface for opening doors, scripting to add conditions when an AI character loses sight of a target. For more information see the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching.